Welcome back to the channel, you guys. We're back at it again with another bank fishing video here in South Louisiana. And today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I haven't done a catch and cook in a very, very long time. So today, that's what we're gonna be doing. It is crappie season and the sackle are spotting heavy, all right? So today we're just gonna be going to a local uh, pond and see if we can get on some fish. Let's see if we can do a catch and cook for you guys. In a minute, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna be using and we're gonna get right to it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, before we go to the fishing, I wanted to tell you guys about my setup. I wanted to show you what I've been using so far. I know I haven't been making too many videos, but I have not stopped fishing. Just to get let you guys know. This is, uh, what is this? The SLX DC Shimano Reel. And it is on a Shimano Claris. I had it on a Falcons Buku rod, but I kept breaking them. So I just got this. And this lure I have, something wacky. You guys probably... I think I'm crazy for this, but what I did was I took a spinner bait. So this is just the, the blade of a spinner bait and I put uh, a hook, the back end of it. So when it's in the water, it just spins really fast and it's kind of like a, I don't know, just, I don't know if you want to call it like a rooster tail or something like that or a spoon, all right? I don't know what it is about this bait, but it catches fish, a little weight on there. I mean, it does not tangle up with the swivel right there. Now, if the weight is too far on it, it'll probably spin with it and it'll take up the line. But for the most part, it just goes in the water, so I'll show you what that looks like in the water real quick. You can see that. I mean, very visible bait, man. I'm talking about bass, everything attacks this. So what we got next is the Falcon Buhu rod. Now, I, I know I just said I break them a lot, but uh, I break the bait casting rod type. This is the spin cast rod type, hence the spin cast rod. Which is a, I don't even know what the hell this is. I think it's a loose speed spin, a little light action rod. And we have that, uh, it's also a seven foot rod. The other one was a seven foot rod as well too, I forgot to tell you about that. And we just have a beetle spin out here, all right? 116th ounce jig head with the Bobby Garland minnow. And I love those, those are like one of my favorite baits to use. And I mean, you guys know what the hell the beetle spin does. I mean, everybody use them. But for some reason, they have really been changing the game lately. And sometimes I use this as like a locator bait, you know? Trying to figure out where these fish are at, we're trolling, we're in the water, or we on, even on the bank. I can use this right here to catch them. We go to this pole right here, all right? This is the pole you guys always see me use. This is the Crappie Max Mighty Light, seven foot rod or seven and a half, I think. Um, I don't use anything under seven foot when it comes to sackling fishing, all right? Now, this is not the jigging pole, but it is like a jigging slash casting pole, you know? So. Um, and this one is probably what I'm going to be using today uh, with another Bobby Garland Black and Chartreuse 116th ounce jig head. And this is kind of like a, I'm going to cast out just like that. And I'm going to just slow roll it back. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Dude, I swear to God, I just threw it up in there. Y'all saw that, right? <laughs> Y'all saw that, right? I'm trying to demonstrate it <laughs> for y'all. And I actually caught a, a sackling. Granted, he is too small. That was not on purpose, you guys. I swear to God. <laughs> I'm going to throw him back. You were just for demonstration purposes, buddy. Dude, that was a... <laughs> I swear. Let me see if I can do it again. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's no way that just happened. Like, I just threw it in there. I think that was just a lucky hit. Yeah. Nope, no, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Dog, I'm over here trying to explain myself, and I'm already getting bites. Oh my God, look at that. This is actually a keeper fish right here. Hold up. Dude, that just goes to show you guys how good these Bobby Garlands work. I mean, the fish are biting so good right now. I'm trying not to catch them, and I'm actually catching them. We're gonna keep him. Anything smaller than this, I'll throw back. <laughs> all right, y'all. We all know that the uh, the Bobby Garland, Black and Chartreuse, minnow work. If I was advertising this, man, I think it actually work out. We're gonna take that off. We're just gonna put a minnow on. I just wanna see what the minnow is. I'm just, I'm just a little curious, that's all. All right, we're just gonna take a, a minnow. I know you guys love to hook them through the head, but I just wanna hook them through the tail real quick to see something. Gonna hook them like right there for maximum action. They don't last long like this though, but hell, the way they bite, I don't think it needs to last that long. It was raining all day yesterday. Now the pond went up a little bit. Now there's water pushing out of this uh, this tunnel. 
and those sacs really like to hover around it. Now, granted, they are spawning, but I mean, it's almost like a feeding ground, you know? A lot of crap comes out of here through this tunnel, and it attracts bait fish and it attracts the, the, uh, the crappie. Oh, there it is. There it is. There's one. Uh, you're not on the big side, but I'll hold on to you. Might as well go through all the minnows. I don't have that many of them. All right, there's another one. Not a big one. It's probably about a uh, maybe eight, maybe pushing nine, ten inches. Not a real big one, but it's a keeper though in Louisiana. There we go. What the hell? Seriously? Seriously, bro? Seriously. Ah, oh, thank God he didn't get hooked. That's crazy. Maybe because this needs a cork. I mean, I do have a... Oh, there's one. There's one. That's what I'm talking about. And we're not catching slabs like I normally do, but we are catching exactly. So I'm going to try to at least take six or seven, maybe eight home. I don't want to be all day uh, filleting fish. Since I have a 116th ounce jig head on here, I mean, it's obviously heavier than the, the fish itself, so I kind of got to move it around a little bit. Oh, that's good. Here it is. That's actually a bigger one right there. It's a hefty one. It's got some shoulders on it. That's a better one. Only this time of the year, man, this is the best fishing you can ever do. Can't get enough of that. It's another good one. I can actually see the water kind of pushing out of it right there. There it is. There it is. That's not even a freaking sack of that. It's a catfish. Catfish. There we go. They're actually not even, they're like right in front of me, like before I even get past the tunnel. Culver, I should say. Another decent sized slab. Look at that. It just ran off with it, but didn't it didn't have the mouth for it. That one did though. I saw it, but I saw it bit it. <sighs> You're no bigger than all the other ones, but it's okay. As long as y'all are biting. I'm a quantity over quality guy right now. It's a beautiful one right there. They definitely moved up. They're like right up in here somewhere. They're not even that far out. Like I'm almost positive I can probably get away with a cork. There we go. Oh, nice jump. Nice jump. Y'all on fire today. Jeez. Another good one. The cork just do not want to eat something about. It works when he wants to. Here it is. That's a good one too. No, and I just lost him. There it is. There it is. Come on, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. No, no hammers just yet, but I think one's gonna come sooner or later. Got this one on the cork, some cork action. It's not a good one right there. There it is. Trying to make sure that one had in his mouth. That's a chunky one. It's better. Better. Getting somewhere. There it is. Look 
better one. On the big man, huh? Still no big, big fish, but I'm gonna take it. Yeah, we have to just go back to tight line, you guys. But we can always rely on good old tight line. Okay, here we go. I mean, I had him. Okay, I think. This is big enough. part of the video so this is what we got right here all right so as you see me in the store i got some ritz crackers uh i got some alfredo ragu uh roasted garlic parmesan sauce we got the fish fillets we also got some grease onion powder garlic powder ground pepper tony saturis and some fish fries so y'all are asking what am I about to do? You guessed it, I'm gonna fry this fish, all right? So um, I wasn't gonna do anything different. Uh, I wanted to be fancy with it, but today I think I'm gonna just switch it up and just do a different type of batter. All right, uh, I don't need this many fillets. I'm gonna be the only one eating this, so I'm only gonna do maybe about six fillets max. Everything else is gonna go into the freezer. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ragu, we're gonna put it in here, we're gonna season it with all the seasonings, and then we're gonna put the fish in here. Probably should've got a bigger bowl, but this will do, because it's only gonna be like six fillets. And then we're gonna pour this in, uh, uh, the ragu in here, we're gonna mix the fish up, and then we're gonna go to step two. So let's do that real quick. Probably should've got a bigger bowl. It's okay though. All right, so now that we got that all lathered up, we're gonna go ahead and go to the next step, which is uh, the seasoning, uh, the fish fry, and the uh, rich crack. Probably can't see it because of the glare, but oh, there it is. So you want your grease to be, I don't know, uh, between 350 and 375. Um, right now it's at 316 and counting. It's gonna go up, so we're gonna go ahead and drop the fish in there anyway, because by the time I fish actually start cooking, it's gonna be at the right temperature, so. All right, you guys, I'm not gonna be doing anything fancy. I only used one bag of Ritz, so all I needed, so. I got like a, uh, I guess you can call it like a flour and bread crumb type thing going on over here, but it's seasoned flour and uh, some Ritz crackers. So it should be pretty interesting. We got the fish right here, coated in the Alfredo sauce. So we're just gonna take it, gonna just bread it up, coat it. It's really hard doing this with one hand, you guys. So I apologize. Take the excess off. Throw it in there. All right, so we've got the three pieces up in there. I got three more pieces left. Um, I'm gonna just let these cook, see how these turn out. We're gonna flip them, and then we're gonna let the other side cook, and then see how they come out. Okay, they're looking a little better. 357, 360. That don't look too bad. I hate that my phone shadow is in the way. done i think it came out pretty good i'm gonna do the taste test not a really big fan of the uh ragu it's like a cheaper kind of brand but this was just a little catch and cook nothing too big definitely rather catch them than cook them and you could have 
you know, pick your own dipping sauce. I just kind of use the Alfredo sauce. <coughs> that sauce hit me way too hard, but it's actually pretty good. I always had an issue with the grease being not too hot or not hot enough to where the sacolet came out a little mushy, but this is actually a really great texture. It's nice and flaky and you can really taste the fish. The Alfredo sauce just give it that Parmesan taste, you know. The Ritz crackers um, definitely gives it that crispy texture to the, uh, the batter. It's way better than just having just a regular fish fry. So I might be doing this from here on out. It's definitely something I'll definitely do in the future. And we're not gonna stop there, you guys. We're gonna be doing a lot more Catch and Cook videos. Um, Sacrilege is just one of my favorite fish to eat. That's why I decided to do a Catch and Cook on this video because I have way too many Sacrilege and I'm not eating enough Sacrilege. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Please, please, please let me know down in the comments if I could have done anything better, um, if I could have done something different with the Alfredo sauce. I could have used too much seasoning, could have used too less seasoning. Y'all let me know down in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys.